The next few weeks, we're going to be looking at Jesus. Uh, we're going to look at him in the past, present, and the future. O on the pulpit here, you may never have noticed, uh, when we made this pulpit, I, put on, I had him put on here, John 12, 21, Sir, we would see Jesus. You know, anytime we preach, really, that's, that's our goal. We want people to see Jesus. And in studying God the Son, uh, we're going to start in John chapter 1 and look at Jesus in eternity past. Some people mistakenly think that Jesus came into existence at Bethlehem, but uh, that's far from the truth. John chapter 1, I'm going to read the first five verses and then we'll read a few more down further in the chapter. John 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse, four, uh, I'm sorry, verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him... To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We just stop reading there. I particularly wanted to read verse 14 so you could see it's, um, how it aligns with the first few verses. In the, in the beginning was the Word. And that's talking about Jesus. Uh, Jesus in eternity past. He certainly didn't come into existence at Bethlehem. He's always been God. God the Son. Uh, from eternity. And that's what it's talking about in, in uh, John 1 verses 1 and 2. The same was in the beginning with God. And then at Bethlehem the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, Jesus has always been God. He's not a created being. We can put it that way. He's the creator. In verse 3, he puts it so specifically. All things were made by him. In case you don't understand that, he says, and without him was not anything made that was made. <laughs> you can't get any clearer than that, can you? Uh, Jesus is not a created being. He's the creator. Everything uh, was made by him. Later on in, in the book of John, Jesus makes a statement in John chapter 8. And... Uh, Verse 56, people often wondered at what Jesus said. And this was one, John 8 and verse 56. He says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Oh, you can just see the puzzled expressions on their faces. When Then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. <laughs> and if you read the next verse, you know they knew what he was saying. Then took they up stones to cast at him. He was saying, I am. When Moses asked God, who, who sent me? You know, who, who, how am I going to tell the, the Jews who sent me? He said, tell them, I am sent you. <laughs> and they knew this is, this is Jehovah God. Now, that's what that, that word means. He was before Abraham. He is God. He's equal with God, as Philippians chapter 2. I love, you know, the Bible has such a wonderful way of, of putting things. God, God does. In Philippians 2, 6, he says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Isn't that a great picture? You know, it, it, it's not, he's not grasping to say he's God. It's just who he is. And we need to understand that Jesus has been active in eternity past. Now, to be honest with you, there's, there's not a whole lot I can say about what God did before creation because I don't think we really know. <laughs> and God doesn't say. But when it comes up to creation, that's, that's what he's talking about when he says, in the beginning. In uh, Colossians chapter 1, he, he talks about it. When he talks about his, his dear son, Colossians 1, 15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. 
and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. I think that's a, an important statement. Uh, before the beginning, uh, well, at the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And now, God, God the Son, Jesus, is busy keeping, sustaining it. That's what that phrase uh, means there, uh, when it says, by him all things consist. I have to laugh sometimes at what some of the things the scientists say. And uh, you've probably heard, they talk about dark matter. You know what they know about dark matter? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's just something they've made up. <laughs> uh, it's it's kind, of, kind of funny to talk about. But personally, I think what they're trying to grasp is what the Bible is saying right here. You, most of our universe is empty space. Even you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Even me. We're all mostly empty space, you know, the, the space between the molecules and the atoms and things. And, and people wonder, you know, what, what is that? What is that space? Well, that's Jesus holding us together. If it wasn't for him, we'd just fly into a million pieces. <laughs> uh, nobody would recognize each other. Uh, he's been active all through eternity. Uh, Hebrews 1 puts it this way, upholding all things by the word of his power. Turn there, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 1. I was thinking as we were singing, really, uh, this could be several sermons. It's going to be just one this morning, and uh, you know me, it won't be terribly long, but uh, there's, a, there's a lot we could say from these two passages, John 1 and Hebrews 1. I've got whole books about them. Um, we see Jesus, and the Bible says here in, in Hebrews 1, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. I'm going to stop reading there. The reason I want to stop there is we see Jesus in eternity past, but we also see Jesus in the Old Testament. Do you know that there's over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament about the Messiah? That's talking about Jesus. And in Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, he says, God... Sundry times, it means many times, and in diverse manner, various ways, spoke, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. He's spoken, and he's told us that there is, the, well, he told us in those times that there was a Messiah who was to come. And the amazing thing is that Jesus fulfilled all of those prophecies, all of them. You know, it, it's not like he fulfilled a couple or it kind of looks like it might be him. Every one of them is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. I find it interesting that the book of Hebrews starts with the word God. <laughs> he doesn't mess around. He, he doesn't you know, waste his time trying to prove that God exists or that God can speak. He assumes God exists because he does. And he assumes that God has spoken because he has. And he's read it. It's like the person who, who said, uh, God's not dead. I'm talking to him this morning. <laughs> You know, uh, we know that there's a God. And God is in Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, uh, three in one. We don't believe in three gods. We believe in one God. And what he's saying here is that in the Old Testament, Jesus was prophesied. Now, I'm not going to try and present all 300 of those, those prophecies this morning, but I will mention a couple. I think the first one that, that comes up is in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. This is right after sin has entered our world. And God says to, uh, actually he's talking to the serpent here, <laughs> to Satan. Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It, that's her seed, shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Already in Genesis chapter 3, he's beginning to talk about the Savior. The one, that the remedy for, for sin. Isaiah uh, put it this way. It's a very similar kind of a thought in Isaiah 7 and, and verse 14 when he said, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And you, you probably know from Matthew where he said, which being interpreted is God with us. Right from the very beginning, God says, You've sinned, but there's a Savior coming. And the Bible says it's, it's God himself. There's many prophecies about who he would be. 
Uh, for instance, in uh, Genesis and, and others, it talks about how he's going to be the seed of Abraham. He's going to be the, uh, the seed of Isaac. He's going to be the seed of, of Israel. And he goes right down through. He's going to be a, of David. You, you know, sometimes in the New Testament, people will call out, Jesus, thou son of David. They knew exactly who he was. In um, Genesis 12, God said to Abram, I'll make of thee a great nation, and will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. I'm sending the Messiah. I'm sending the Savior. And when you get to uh, Matthew chapter 1, uh, that's how he, he labels him. He says, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. That's who he was to be. That's who he is. In uh, Micah chapter 5 and verse 2 is a, a very specific prophecy. Wednesday nights we've looked at the books on both sides of this, Jonah and Nahum. Uh, Micah is right, right there in the middle. And it says, But thou Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Now, that's not talking about just any person. It's talking about the Messiah. Very specific. He doesn't just say Bethlehem. That could be Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, it's Bethlehem Ephrata. It's the, the Bethlehem we know of. And he says that he's coming from eternity. He's coming out of, uh, out of eternity. That's why you probably are aware of this, that when the wise men came, uh, they asked, you know, where's, where's this uh, promised one going to be? Where, where, they asked where the Christ should be born. And they said, they said to them, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written in the prophets. And they quote from Micah chapter 5, verse 2. I don't know if they had chapters and verses back then, but anyway, uh, they're able to say this is, this is where he'll be because God had, had said it. In, in Colossians, where, where we read, and he is before all things and by him all things consist. So many prophecies. Uh, they, it tells about the gifts that would be given. Uh, it tells about John the Baptist, not by name, but that uh, there would be a person who would announce his coming. It tells about Galilee and tells about his betrayal, about how he would die. And the amazing thing about that is they prophesied the crucifixion when they didn't do crucifixions. And yet it's recorded. Uh, even the, the people's reactions as Jesus is on the cross are, are prophesied in, in the Old Testament. Uh, see, when, when Hebrews uh, starts off, he's talking about those kind of things. Jesus has been presented. And Jesus fulfilled all of these prophecies. In Hebrews chapter 1, then he continues, verse 2, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies. Now, he speaks to us. The Bible says there in, in verse 2, he is heir of all things. Now what, what it's basically saying there is that it's all about him. Uh, we're we're going to be joint heirs, but he's the heir. Uh, it's his program. There, there's a, a verse in uh, Romans where I think it, it puts it uh, in a good way. Romans 11, verse 36. Of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Uh, that's what we're talking about. Uh, he's heir of all things. It's all about Jesus. Uh, Revelation 4.11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and power and honor. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. See, it's His program. He's, he's the heir. Uh, he's the one that, that it's about. And then it says in Hebrews uh, 1, verse 2, He made the worlds. Now, you need to understand that word worlds there is not like the earth. There's, an, there's another word for that. This is the word that has to do with periods of time. And what it's talking about is all the different eras or dispensations, we use the word, that we go through are Jesus, 
or what Jesus is doing. You know, there was a time before the law. There was a time with the law. There was a time before Israel. There was a time with Israel. Uh, there's a time of grace, time of the church, time before the church. All those times, it's His purpose. It's what He's doing. It's His program. Uh, Jesus is working out His purpose and His program through time. Galatians puts it this way. When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son. See, when it was the right time. It's His program. He, he decided did you know in the, in the book of Daniel and other places, it, it told us right when he would be born? You know, if, if you knew the things they were talking about, you could say, yeah, that's, that's, that's the right time, the fullness of time. He sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the ad adoptions, the adoption of sons. That was his time, his program. I was looking at that this morning, and I realized Ephesians 1.10 says, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Uh, there's, there's other things still on God's program. And uh, God is going to bring us all together as, uh, as his children. Uh, in, uh, in Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of Scripture. He's the one that it's, that it's about. It's his story. And in Hebrews chapter 1 there, again, uh, verse, verse 3, it says that, who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person. He's the person of God. It's His purpose, it's His program, but He's the person as well. It talks about the brightness of His glory. It, it's a bit like the sun. Now, this is not a perfect example, but you know, we see the light of the sun. We don't really see the sun. We see the light of the sun. And God is a spirit. We don't, we don't see God, but we see Jesus manifest in the flesh. Like the, like the sun. And the Bible says he's the express image of his person. This is a hard concept to, to grasp. It's a hard concept to, to teach as well. Uh, but in Jesus Christ, we have God. God in the flesh. Now, he had laid aside his glory. There were some things that, that were different because he'd taken uh, a body. He became a man, made in the likeness of men. But in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9... He says, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, in Christ. What we're talking about here is the, the deity of Christ. It's one of the reasons we sang Hark the Herald Angels Sing this morning. Uh, that, that song is so full of doctrine and, and scripture. One of the things it says, Adam's likeness now efface, stamp thine image in its place. Second Adam from above. Did you notice that as we sang? Uh, there's the first Adam. He's the one that got us into trouble. The second Adam is one who got us out of trouble. That's Jesus Christ. And that's what the Bible calls him. He's not only uh, uh, the person of God. The Bible says then that he is the preserver of all things. He is upholding all things by the word of his power. Upholding all things by the word of his power. Now he's always done that. Past, present, future. Uh, if you're there in Hebrews... Uh, the next couple of weeks are actually going to be these next phrases. Uh, when he had by himself purged our sins. That's next week. Sat down in the right hand of the majesty on high. Uh, that's the week after. Uh, we're, we're looking at Jesus, past, present, and future. Jesus is the eternal God, working in eternity past, working in the Old Testament, prophesying. And you know, you particularly see Jesus, I think, by his names. His full name, really, as we think about it in a, in a human way, I guess, is Jesus Christ the Lord. But he has many names. Jesus, um, Matthew 1, 21, they said to, um, I think they were talking to Joseph here. It says, they shall, call, they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. I'm ahead of myself. Verse 21, she shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus means Jehovah our Savior. It's a wonderful name, Jehovah our Savior. It's his earthly name in a sense. You might say a name of humiliation, a name of, of suffering, but it speaks of Jehovah being our Savior, and that's who he is. Christ is the name that means Messiah. Now, 
we know that exactly because when, um, when Andrew and Simon and those met Jesus, uh, Andrew said to Simon, we found the Messiah. Now, I'm not sure if he said this to Peter or if the Bible just says it to us, which is being interpreted the Christ. <laughs> the Christ, that means the Messiah, the promised one, the one that all those prophecies were about. This is him. Boy, they were excited. Can you imagine? You know, they've been waiting for hundreds of years, not them as individuals, but as a nation. And uh, here he is. It's the Christ. I don't know if you've thought about this, but what an honor it is that we're called by his name. What are we called? Christians. We're the ones who are followers of the Messiah. Jesus, Jehovah our Savior, Christ, Messiah. Lord is a title of deity and authority. It means master. In fact, one time uh, Jesus said to some people, why do you call me Lord and then you don't do the things that I say? <laughs> In Romans chapter 10, when we talk about salvation, we talk about him being the Lord. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. You know, I meet a lot of people who say they're Christians, but I, I don't get the impression they, they've called upon him as Lord. The Lord Jesus Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus Christ the Lord. And we saw in John 8 how he called himself I Am. That's just another word for Jehovah. And right through the New Testament, he, he gives himself labels and names that I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the light of the world, he said. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the resurrection and the life. In John 14, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Man, that, that speaks of uh, God. He's also called the Son of God. That's a, a concept that some people just cannot and will not accept. Uh, but Jesus did, and, and God teaches it. In Luke 1.35, the angel uh, said to Mary, That holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called... The Son of God. Now, some of the cults and, and different ones have tried to minimize that. They've tried to make it that He is a Son of God, like we are, in a sense. But in John chapter 19 and, and verse 7, you see the, the importance of it. Uh, the Jews, it's, it's near the time when they're getting ready to crucify Christ, and the Jews said, we have a law, and by our law he ought to die. And here's why. Because he made himself the Son of God. See, that's what they're, they're talking about. When he's called the Son of God there in John chapter 19 and verse 7, uh, it's saying he's God. We only believe in one God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're, they're Jehovah. He's the Son of God. You know, he's, he's been the Son of God for all, all of eternity. We become sons of God, children of God, through salvation. And He is that salvation. He is the way. He's the truth. And there's so many more that you could look at. And, and it's, a, it's a great study. It's, a, it's an exciting thing to look at uh, that He's Emmanuel, God with us. That He's the Savior. You know, unto you is born this day a Savior. He's the only begotten Son. He's the Alpha and Omega. I was thinking about that this week. That's the alphabet. Yeah, he's, he's the very letters that make the words. Oh, he's the word. So of course he's the alphabet. <laughs> he's the alpha and the omega. He's the Lord of glory. Uh, Isaiah said he's, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He's called in other places the Ancient of Days, the Son of Abraham, Son of David, Rabbi, Master, Good Shepherd, Great High Priest the door, the branch, the stone, the redeemer. You could go on and on. And what I want you to do this morning is I want you to see Jesus. But I want to ask you this. What is he to you? We can see what the Bible says. What is he to you? Is he your Savior? Is he your Lord? Listen, he is the Savior. He is the Lord. But have you claimed him as your own? Have you come to him, like he said, as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. 
And he gets so specific there in, in John chapter 1 when he says, uh, let, me, let me turn there just so I get it exactly right. When he says, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And it's not by human effort. It's not by some cultural thing. God doesn't have any grandchildren. We have to come to God by faith. And we have to come to God through Jesus Christ, the God-man, the Son of God. Now, what a blessing it is. Now, what is He to you? The Bible says, when He had by Himself purged our sins. It says in John, in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. As many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Have you been born of God? And that's the most important question for eternity in your life. Do you know God through Jesus Christ? The one that worked before creation, the one that worked in creation, the one prophesied right through the Old Testament, that's Jesus Christ the Lord. Let me encourage you this morning. Make sure, make sure. The Bible says work out your own salvation. Now, it's not saying be saved by works. It's saying make sure you're saved. Work it out. For by grace are you saved through faith. Faith comes by hearing. So you can work it out by getting into God's Word. And if you'll do what God says, God promises that He'll save you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're going to sing a, a song this morning. It's page 159. It's the song, Jesus, I Come. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, listen, make that your graduation song. <laughs> uh, make it your entrance, your wedding song, whatever you want to call it. Uh, page 159, we'll get to Azrael to come and lead us. I'll just be down here at the front. If you'd like someone to go through the scriptures with you and <clears throat> show you how to trust Christ and show you uh, what, what our faith is in, uh, you come and we'll have someone show you from God's Word. How